Welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. On this week's episode, we're gonna take you through a deep dive on two very high-end pieces of equipment. First, the Spondooly Tech SP31 Yukon. And then right after that, we're gonna take you through a script unit, Mining A6 Technologies, the Excalibur 5. After that, we'll give another quick shout out to the BTC Miami. We'll be bringing the whole team down there. Can't wait to see y'all. Now let's go ahead and start episode 23, the Spondooly Tech SP31 Yukon and MAT's Excalibur 5. This is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. Now let's first look at Spondooly's tech as a company before we jump right into this unit here. This company, by far, bar none, is the best when it comes to Bitcoin mining in the industry. I've personally met these guys, both at the BTC Chicago and at Hashers United. Simple words cannot express how dialed in these guys are. They've built an all-star team of electrical, mechanical, thermal, and mathematical engineers. I'm talking people that just don't have good resumes of what school they went to. We're talking folks from Intel and other leading chip manufacturers. They assembled it. They looked at the bottom line and said, there's a lot of companies trying to angle at this. Let's build an entire team, process everything here, manufacture everything in Israel, and make sure that we're taking it to the next level and that we can deliver on what we say we're going to deliver. And the results of that mission and vision was a full end-to-end product complete before orders were placed. They sold the SP20 and got it out there with it already manufactured and ready to go. But enough about talking up this company, let's physically look at the product that we have in hand that we've been running over several weeks to see the consistency of how good this unit actually is. The unit here in reference is the SP31 Yukon. This unit's effective hash rate is 4.5 tera hash, plus or minus 10% running on 30 Spondooly Tech Rockerbox A6 in a 2U rack mountable form factor. Now on paper, this unit required 1200 watts per PSU, roughly one 20 amp connection or a single 30 amp connection for both of the power supplies. But for our testing purposes, we went ahead and split it across two 20 amp connections separately. I wanted to monitor the actual power usage per power supply, seeing if it was drawing more on one than the other, or if it was really evenly distributed. In addition to that, we wanted to make sure how loud is this unit in a normal environment. Like if somebody wanted to buy just one of these or a couple of these, and they wanted to put them into a room, how loud was this gonna be? So we actually brought out the decimal meter and got some pretty good readings in there, sub 70 decimal, which by comparison to a lot of other units we've tested is pretty good. Now the sample testing that we did with this unit is we ran it straight, literally for the last three weeks. Now we had a couple of times that we powered it off to go ahead and open it up, but this unit, by far, bar none, is the best unit we have ever tested. The build quality, the sound, the stability, the power usage, never fluctuating, this unit is in a class of its own. This is the Ferrari of the industry if this is compared to a car. Now, I don't want to alienate any other really high-end companies out there that have been building units such as Bitfury and a couple of other companies out there. But one, we haven't tested those. And two, there's a lot of supercars in the world. So other companies out there, Bitfury and stuff, if you think that your engineering is up to this challenge, then you know where to contact us at. And I know it sounds like I'm really bolstering these guys up, but if we open this unit up and we take a look at this to you, think about this, to you, almost all of the units out there, small and large, are at least three U plus in size. This particular unit, if we take a look at the actual engineering that has went into this unit to make sure the form factor, the size, the spacing of the chips, the cooling solution that's used, the standard form factor that makes it really nice for anybody using a server rack. If we just take a look at the accessibility to the power supplies, using a server style unit, being able to hot swap those, and then looking at the design of the way the stacks are internally with the way the chips are laid out to really maximize the amount of chips that you can across the space and ensure that cooling solution can get enough air across those and then pull the exhaust exit to the rear. But enough about the discussion of what a technical masterpiece this is. How does the software look and does it actually deliver the Terra hash that it's, it has on paper? Now this particular unit actually broadcasts locally on your network as a URL that you can go to myminer.io. 
we drill into that and the first screen that it comes to is a list of all the different SP models that would be available on your network. So right away, they're already getting into that LAN cluster type of mentality. You go into the single unit that we have here and then it drills into a very highly detailed presentation dashboard of exactly what's going on with this unit. From a terahash over a time period, the stability, the power usage, some of the pertinence about the machine. In addition, you have pools, settings, firmware upgrades, ASIC stats, events, some license info, and of course a little help area at the top. In addition to that, that's where the network settings and hardware control is, which allows you to go in there and actually change and enable and disable specific ASICs. The pool info area obviously manages all your pools and the CG miner config for those pools. If you're gonna have multiple fell over pools, you can do that within this area also. Now, if we take a look at the ASIC stats portion of this software, this really shows the level of engineering that's went into this unit, not just from a hardware design standpoint, but really the software that can plug in and look very down in detail to the actual ASIC chips, how they're performing, what their voltage is, the frequencies, the actual temperature coming off of those, and a very nice presentation format that allows you to quickly get to that information and understand what's going on with your particular unit. This really carries over when we look at the events also and you see the detailed system log. To this day, I have not seen this level of detail being presented in a presentation layer in a mining ASIC device. This really sets the bar very high for a lot of those other companies coming into this space to take notice of the best practice that's being done here, both on a software and a hardware platform. Now for an overall wrap up the SP31 Yukon, this unit, A+, 100%, no issues. Three solid weeks running. We powered it down twice to do some of the deep dives looking at the internal shots that we got. But this unit, no kidding, worked flawlessly. Very high-end unit, very good construction, highly recommend it. The unit maintained 4.5 to 4.7. The rolling average, actually, if we look at some of the, high, the deep details from the actual pool side of things. The unit was holding around 4.7, 4.6, and peaked at 4.8 terahash. Bottom line, you're getting what you're paying for on this unit. Now let's switch gears and move over to the script side of the house and look at a brand new unit from MAT, the Excalibur 5. Now looking at the company, Mining Asics Technology, this is a company from the Netherlands. Now we've seen a few threads on this company and a lot of people were asking, you know, they took some pre-orders, where's the units? What's going on with it? You know, the typical kind of what's going on with this new mining company that's supposed to be putting out some hardware. There was some speculation that they were gonna deliver anything and sure, lo and behold, here is the unit that they've been promising, the Excalibur 5. Now, not much is known about the actual company. I mean, they say they have engineers that are working with them from Germany and it's obvious that they put out a product. I mean, we have one physically here and looking at the construction, the design, the layout, it is one of the better ASIC mining script units that we've seen the the actual overall quality looking inside the device the layout of the cards the cooling solution that's provided the overall cable management a lot of those items come together in this unit with a nice display on the front this is a more put together unit than some of the stuff that we've seen come out of uh, Shenzhen and a few of the other pieces that have just been drop shipped to us and we've looked at and most importantly the unit over the past three weeks of testing has worked very well now the team had this for about three weeks and we ran it through some pretty rigorous testing and mind you we at the same time we're doing the sp31 so we had a uh, an in engineering marvel to compare it against now granted one was script and one was bitcoin 256 sha but from an engineering standpoint from a sound from a performance standpoint on the chips were they shutting down was it stable we really wanted to see the comparison between what i'd almost consider both ferraris of their own space we open it up here and take a look at just the construction and the layout and the cable design as i talked before on it this unit is one of the best script asic designed units out there now many of the for you characteristics are that of the other script units that are out there it's almost the same case itself the physical actual metal the case design design as a lot of the other units out there but the card placement the layout of the fans and the, the layout of the cables and where the actual pie is at it really lays out well inside of it another design difference is most of these type of asics really try to put the form factor of the external power supply internally so you actually can store it in there and plug it in from the outside where this unit really has the actual pci express plugins at the bottom of the case on the outside allowing you to use different types of power supplies and be able to switch out 
if needed if one particular unit failed. Now in this sample test, we went ahead and used two HX1050 Corsair power supplies and one 750 CX power supply. Now the two 1050s were powering the actual ASIC cards and the 750 was used really just to power the controller board. We were looking at power individually on each. I wanted to spread this across three different power supplies and see the actual draw from each one separately. Now if we take a look at this table here, this is the breakdown of the power usage. Now you can get away with this unit if you were using two 1200 watt power supplies. Our total overall power usage on this particular unit was right there around 2400 watts of power from the wall. The actual ASICs boards themselves were using right there at 2,000 watts of power from the wall and then you had the fans and the controller board using right around 230 to 300 watts of power so you had enough overhead if using two let's say thermal take 1200 watt power supplies would have done the job here now this particular unit actually generated quite a bit of heat and including the power supplies generating their own heat also from running pretty close to their max we actually put this unit in a separate room and then ran it overnight running a time lapse to see with the window open how long would it take you that room up and we look we had a start temperature right around 69 degrees and it rose pretty quickly up into that 80 degree standpoint interesting enough running a time lapse in a room we went ahead and let the temperature climb up around 85 degrees and we did see the unit start to give up some we had actually some of the cards back down to about half of their power as the, the temperature reached a point where the, it had to thermally bring down the internal temperature of the unit we went ahead and tried to restore the room temperature down to an acceptable level and the unit never really recovered from from that so we actually had to power the unit down leave it off for a little bit and then repower it back up and make sure the room temperature stayed around that 77 or lower temperature rating now on paper this unit was reported at 250 mega hash and over the course of the three weeks we did see it achieve pretty much that as an average anywhere from 242 to 255 mega hash this unit was able to perform and we would see peaks of close to 280 mega hash and then it would back the cards back down some bottom line it was staying within its specs that it reported which is saying a lot considering the last few mining ASICs that we've tried, including a one that had been touted as 400 mega hash being the KNC Titan, we never saw more than 120 mega hash. This puts this unit as of today, the fastest script mining single device that we've tested in our studio here. Now, if we take a quick look at the software that comes with this, this would be the one area that absolutely unequivocally is the polar opposite of the SP31 Yukon. If you're taking that as a baseline reference of an industry standard now. The UI was very simple and to the point. It showed the actual cards and their performance, your pools, some basic settings configuration, and an area if you wanted to upload a new actual software update. And that was it. There was no deep diving on the actual ASIC units themselves. There was no dashboard showing time and history, really yielding the unit over to the pool that it's on for you to get that level of information. And as we all know, pools sometimes don't give you the most accurate information. I would ask mining a6 technology to go back to the drawing board on this one and do an update that gives a better representation of what's going on with the unit but bottom line this mining unit is supposed to be pushing out 250 mega hash and with it being able to do that and do that consistently we're really just splitting hairs on the software so in closing you have now seen the two top units and their respective Places. The Bitcoin Solution 4.7 Terahash Spondulis Tech. Now they do have another high-end unit coming out that has already started shipping, which is a 5.5 Terahash unit. We'll try to get a hold of one of those. But right now, what you're looking at is Spondulis Tech leading the way on performance and reliability when it comes to Bitcoin mining solutions. And then you got Mining A6 Technologies MAT unit with the fastest unit that we have tested, outdoing the Titan by a factor of two for uh, a fraction of the cost and a real good unit that if you're still into mining script i think you will absolutely be happy with now coming up in some of our next episodes we're still trying to get a hold of a few more fonduli tech units maybe one of those 5.5 terahash units and the new home bringing mining back to home unit which the 1.7 terahash sp20 mini in addition to that we've been reaching out to bitmain we've been trying to get some ant miners i'd love to take you guys through kind of an s1 s2 s3 and then even the new s4 maybe of a full solution ant miner episode let us know down in the description if you guys would like
like to see that kind of seeing the different histories of those um and obviously we let you guys know that we're going to be heading down to btc miami we're going to be bringing the entire crew down there we're going to try to make sure that we do it a lot like the hashers united review where we'll have live streaming of the entire event each of the presentations and then maybe get some interviews with some key people and try to bring that to you and the way that bbt brings things to you guys thanks for sticking in there make sure you subscribe get the word out and as always stay tuned the bits be tripping the bits be tripping